Now, I wanted to film this video probably about a week ago, but I didn't have the time to film it. But honestly, I, I've, as I've always been told, it's better late than never. So this is my video where I go out and put out my tribute to Teddy Bridgewater for what he did for New Orleans. So before I go and give out my thanks, I kind of want to go and do a bit of a history on him. So 2014 NFL Draft. He was the third overall drafted quarterback, went 32nd overall. Now, he was past... Now, he the people that were drafted before him were Blake Bortles and Johnny Menzel, and you can clearly tell how well their careers have turned out for them. But, um, anyways, um, when the Browns, when they traded up for the 22nd pick, they invested a ton of money to figure out who was the best quarterback in the draft, and they were told Teddy Bridgewater. But they go with Johnny Football, or Johnny Manziel in this case. So, you know, Bridgewater, he fell, and, uh, you know, throughout his first couple seasons, he was pretty decent. Um, not the greatest quarterback. He wasn't, he wasn't terrible, but wasn't, like, elite at the same time. You know, he had Adrian Peterson, Stefan Diggs, Kyle Rudolph, and, you know, made, made it to the playoffs once. Um, the Vikings, he was the quarterback when Blair Walsh missed a gimme 29-yard field goal, which cost them the playoffs, well, clearly. And then, practice in 2016, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, he tore his ACL, and he was out for some time. He was out for over a year and, like, four months. And when he was actually, med he was medically cleared to play in the 2017 season for the Vikings, but the problem was they were in on Case Keenum because Case Keenum was having his super fluky season. So he was the quarterback at the helm at the time, so Teddy could just sit back and watch. But there was the Decem there was a game in December. Uh, Minnesota went up like 35-3 to on the Bengals, and Teddy Bridgewater got his first chance, got a standing ovation from the crowd because it had been quite a journey that he had had. But... Then there came free agency that year, and he went to the New York Jets as the Vikings pulled in Kirk Cousins. And pretty quickly, he had a very short tenure with the New York Jets as the Saints traded to get Teddy Bridgewater to be Drew Brees' backup, which does end up turning out to be a very, very good move. And that happened in, in the uh, 2018 season. So uh, Saints roll on to a 13-2 record. Uh, we had clinched first place after a huge win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, of course, we give Teddy Bridgewater water the start because we had nothing to lose, nothing to gain. We'll be the number one overall team. Uh, you know, uh, Teddy goes in, does a decent job, but honestly, he was missing every offensive player and put up decent numbers, but we lost that game. And we went 13-3 and and uh, lost in the NFC Championship game. So going into the 2019 season, you know, expectations on us were super high. We were supposed to be this team that would be maybe the Super Bowl favorite. Uh, you know, week one, we barely escaped the Houston Texans with a nice win. Uh, then week two comes Drew Brees when he, on a pass, throws it. And Aaron Donald comes down and his hand right on his finger... Ended up with a torn figure ligament. So, Teddy Bridgewater was thrust into the scene. And in the first game he had, he threw for 165 yards and no touchdowns. So, at that point, the one thing that pissed me off is everybody just put aside New Orleans. They put away the Saints just because Drew Brees wasn't in the picture. And I'll be honest myself. I didn't even have my hopes. I did not think he would do what he would do. Like, I thought he was going to do okay, like... But I was just so pissed that everyone put him aside. Like, everyone had, like, the Saints losing. Uh, when we went into week four primetime against the Cowboys, I remember all five of the NBC play people there. It's like, who you got one of the game? Everybody went Dallas. We'll get to that later. But at that point, we went from Super Bowl favorites to be, to be lucky enough to make the playoffs. And, you know, I pegged us for maybe Teddy to go 3-3 three and three or 4-2 and because Breezy would be missing at least six games. So first game he played against Seattle, you know, did all right. Threw for 177 yards, two touchdowns. 
mainly fed the ball to Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. They kind of carried the load for that game. But overall, not a bad game, you know, not a bad start. The thing was, he didn't really wow anyone. Didn't wow us, didn't exactly shit the bed either. So, you know, was serviceable. Then you got the game against Dallas. We go into that game and obviously we're underdogs. Dallas is coming in 3-0, but they hadn't played a good team yet. So, you know, he comes in through 193 yards, zero touchdowns, and a pick. Now, the pick was not his fault. It was because I'm pretty sure it was Ted Ginn Jr. could not hold on to the ball and was intercepted by Dallas. But we pulled off the miraculous 12-10 victory over the Cowboys, proving our dominance, proving that we're not a joke. We are going to be able to carry ourselves. But, you know, after those two games, you know, Teddy Bridgewater didn't look like he was too serviceable. It looked like... He wouldn't be able to perform. But then came week five against the Buccaneers, where he had the best game of his career, throwing for 314 yards, four touchdowns, and a pick, once again, because our receivers could not catch the ball. The best goddamn game he played, maybe the biggest statement win that we had that season, showing that we don't need Drew Brees. Like, we, our team has enough, enough depth that Brees isn't needed. Going to Jacksonville, you know, high hopes about their defense, threw 240 yards and a touchdown. You know, it did a good job, won that game 13-6. to It was another kind of like a low-scoring affair, which with Teddy, like those, that was kind of a trend. Uh, then week, week seven against the Bears, I really wish I could have watched that game, but I was driving home from Buffalo because I was with my buddy Ryan, went out to watch a Bills game. But had just another very good game, throwing 281 yards and two touchdowns uh, against the Bears defense. Now, even though their offense at that point wasn't really good, their defense was still just as good as ever. And we roll into Chicago, roll into Soldier Field, maybe produce another statement victory. And then Breeze would announce that he would return in Week 8. Now, at that point, I was... I. I didn't really want Breeze to play. I actually wanted Teddy Bridgewater to play the Cardinals and then have Breeze return because we see we saw what happened with Kevin Durant when he tried to return to the court too early against the Toronto Raptors in the NBA Finals towards ACL. And that's what happens. So I didn't want Drew Breeze to possibly injure himself permanently. But that didn't happen. Saints, we went 13-3 and again, but lost in the wildcard round of the Vikings. I'll be honest. If Teddy Bridgewater, if we had won the Super Bowl, Teddy Bridgewater already goes down as a New Orleans icon. But that didn't happen. But even though, in my books, he's still an icon for us. So, to finish it off, Teddy Bridgewater, probably not going to watch this. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you did for the Saints. Thank you for proving all the doubters wrong. You know, you had massive shoes to fill. And you did it perfectly. Sure, the beginning, it was a little bit rough, but we hadn't fully adjusted your game plan. The last three games is what defined who you were. And I am so happy that you got a second chance. Now, the only other guy I ever want to see get a second chance is Robert Griffin III. But other than that, thank you, Teddy, for doing this. I can't thank you enough. It still sucks that we didn't win the Super Bowl, but, you know, you served your time. You did what was needed to be done. Just proved all the doubters wrong. And everyone at school, you know, they were saying, you're trash, don't have breeze, get out of here, you're not a contender. You proved that we were a contender. You've earned that second chance. I'm not happy that you're with the Panthers, but you've earned that second chance. Thank you.